हेलो एवरीबॉडी एंड अ वॉम वेलकम टू टूडेज पॉडकास्ट आई एम योर होस्ट डॉक्टर हर्षिता एंड इट्स अ प्रिवलेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस आर डिस्टिंग गेस्ट डॉक्टर मालती करुपिया एन एकम्पलिस्ड फिजिशियन एंड एंडोक्राइनोलॉजिस्ट एट प्रिंस कोर्ट मेडिकल सेंटर मलेशिया डॉक्टर मालती हैज अ कीन इंटरेस्ट इन डायबिटीज मैनेजमेंट ओबेसिटी एंड फर्टिलिटी Notably her academic contributions are equally impressive having authored two thesis papers as the main author and co-authored several others and today the focus of our discussion is the strategic approach to managing diabetes welcome dr malthi it's a pleasure to have you with us today thank you thank you harshita thanks for having me yeah great so uh, let's dive right in So the first question is what personalized strategies have you found most effective for helping patients manage their blood sugar levels while considering their individual lifestyle and preferences Okay I uh, I think it's a very interesting question uh because um based on my experience with all my patients that I've been seeing in my clinic uh when you speak about personalized uh strategy I think a few things that I always tend to emphasize to them is that whether what is their extent of self awareness and self acceptance the minute they get to know their diabetes. Uh the common thing that I always notice is that most of them the minute they found out that they are diabetic and I'm getting the age uh group age gap is just reducing and you know they become very uh you know uh very scared very worried and think that there's nothing else can be done. So I think it starts with uh mainly self awareness and I I I always straight away dive into how much are they ready and so I don't bomb them with so much of information um I I always start off very uh light with them uh but I think it starts off with first lifestyle management and I think that is still the utmost superior uh treatment and uh way of treating diabetes per se uh so I always talk to them about diet choice of food Uh I think a lot of us are guilty as uh you know charged because we love food and sometimes we are not aware of what is good what is not so I speak to them in regards to them uh about food choices the other thing also that I talk to them is uh if they do come alone I tend to tell them to come within the next 2 weeks to see me with a family member uh especially if uh if they're married come with their spouse because I think it's a very important thing everything starts from home So as much as we can emphasize on lifestyle change I think it's very important that the family gets involved so they are aware of what's happening and at least you know it'll be under good observation good motivation uh you know it it gives a good foundation to starting this whole diabetic uh, treatment journey uh the other thing is um again um when I speak about lifestyle management not only diet but also exercise so I tend to tell them uh or ask them uh what kind of uh exercise they enjoy doing and give them some options because i don't think one type of exercise is going to help everybody and i think it's very individualized yeah yeah that's a great approach dr malthi and uh now we know that medication choices are pivotal right so when it comes to medication management for diabetes What are the key considerations for selecting the right medication or insulin therapies for patients? Okay, uh so usually what I tend to do I uh tend to profile my patient. I do something called patient profiling. So I when they they come in with their results, I always look at what are the HB1Cs, uh what are uh, complications they would have already sustained and I will see whether they put any target or good damages. So based on this then I kind of start uh talking to them on what kind of treatment I'm going to start uh them on. So of course I will see them on a whole I'm looking at also their BMI what is their weight and the other thing is I think it's very important to know what is their concern. Diabetics it being the baseline of it but whether they come in with obesity whether they come in with heart failure whether they come in with a cardiovascular problem or whether they come in with you know chronic kidney disease So based on all this individualized uh you know complications or target organ damage that you may say uh then I choose the medication whether it being uh, uh oral diabetic medication or whether it's just insulin. Uh so I tailor according to individual uh, uh need of uh treatment. Um yeah I think it's very important that you know we we look at this uh, in a whole just then just looking at just numbers per se 
because you want to also be able to allow the patient to be comfortable with the treatment choices that you give them and i think i always emphasize on talking to them in regards how the medication works and what is the side effects of each and every uh, medication because i think the perception that most of them have they're very scared the common uh, you know uh, comment i get is that doctor you're starting me on all this medication is it going to cause me you know kidney problem or you know some other problem liver problem so i always tell them it's actually the disease that advanced disease we don't control now is what's going to contribute to all your complications rather than the medication because the medications have been you know it it's being uh, monitored we frequently do blood tests and you know it's been uh, based on guidelines um one of the main guidelines that i use to choose my treatment also is the uh, european american uh, european society of diabetes and also the american diabetes association so they've given very good guidelines uh, on how to tailor your treatment choices for your patient yes yes thank you doctor for emphasizing the importance of tailoring treatments to patients unique situations now uh, i want to know your views on continuous glucose monitoring so can you elaborate on the significance of cgm and how it aids in tracking and adjusting diabetes management strategies yeah i was so happy that you know one of the quest this questions that you put up uh, because i think this is a new frontier everyone is moving towards the continuous glucose monitoring i love to get, you know introduce this new technology to my patients and tell them the benefit of it um what kind of patients do i choose uh, to introduce uh, cgm to them uh, these are patients who probably has uh, erratic uh, diabetic uh, you know monitoring or you know sugar range so it could be very hypers and very hypos that they are probably uh, uh, experiencing and you know sometimes if there's a discrepancy with their blood as in their h1c and also their monitoring at home so i tend to tell them okay let's try this two weeks so most of the time uh you know the cgm we put on for 2 weeks and then we see what is their sugar levels their range and and we can it helps not only us but also the patient and most patient the minute they put the cgm on they tend to be a bit obsessive with their sugar monitoring but that's good because that kind of tells them what they can eat and what they cannot eat and what increases their sugar you know so it kind of also helps them individually i think all of us are very visual person and we want to see you know uh numbers and results in front of us so when you put the cgm uh it's not only helping the the physician but it's also actually helping the patient per se um the other thing is i think it also helps uh them uh, and us to actually kind of tell whether it is a behavioral problem uh and or whether it's the medication that we need to kind of uh you know tweak and see whether it helps them and of course it also helps us to know whether they have nocturnal hypoglycemia whether it's because of a dawn phenomenon or is it a simogi effect so these are the things that you know i look uh, when i put a cgm on them and it helps me to tailor my management in a whole for them yes the cgm yeah. truly brings a new level of precision to diabetes management and yeah. uh, now dr maldi uh, diabetes management isn't just about the numbers right it involves psychological and emotional aspects too so how do you address yeah. psychological and emotional aspect of diabetes management such as diabetes distress or burnout what support system do you recommend yeah so i see this a lot in especially younger age group the teenagers or the type 1 diabetes because they are the one that you know fall in the younger age group categories and it's so difficult to just sit here and tell them you know you can't eat this you can't eat that you cannot have this you know this this uh, sugar drinks you can't have your cake and all that so i always encourage them to join a a, a community so there's a lot of community actually internationally where they have a group uh, support for type 1 dms or even type 2 dms and i think it makes them not feel alone and i think i am a person i advocate uh, mental health to all my patients and i think it's so important when you have that same group of people you kind of uh you know deviate to understand that yeah we have the same kind of problem uh so if what you're going to advise me what it's working for you i'm going to try and i'm going to try to tailor my uh, lifestyle towards it comparatively if they see a colleague or a peer or a friend that doesn't have diabetes and try to ad- uh, advise them they tend to say you don't understand what i'm going through you know i have to control this i have to control that 
So I think as a, a medical physician uh, or an endocrinologist like myself sitting at this part of the table and advising my patient, I always tell them that, you know, uh, I, I understand what you're going through and come with a plan. Let's come together as a plan. Hence why earlier on I said that I like when the family comes together uh, so it can be somewhere where you can and you can talk to them in a whole. So there's motivation not only from the doctor's point but also from the family point because we are only seeing them once a while, once in three months probably or sometimes once in two months. Um, how much can we actually know what's happening at home? So if you involve their family, I think it gives the family not only kind of like a, a window or a better perspective of what actually is happening. Uh, so I, I see this a lot, a lot of burnt out, especially uh, on the younger age group or the older age group. You know, the in-between, you kind of get to talk to them and they kind of have that, that flow of thoughts of how to uh, change and modify their lifestyle and what kind of being compliant to medication. But the younger age group and the older age group, they are the age where they're like, why should I do this? Why should I do that? Why should I control all this? I want to live a normal life. So I think when you put them in a in a community or in a support group of the same kind, they tend to you know understand and um, kind of be more compliant to their diet and medication. Yeah, Doctor Mathi, as you said, you advocate mental health. So mental well-being is an integral part of managing diabetes effectively. I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, so um, moving ahead, could you discuss the importance of regular blood sugar monitoring and how it guides treatment adjustment and lifestyle modification for patients with diabetes? Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's another good question also because uh, I think all my patients knows me well enough that I always emphasize on them uh, doing glucometer check. Uh, so again, like I said, Visual. We are all human beings that love to see visually things and understand it. And when we see, it, then only we believe it. Um, and uh, I realize, and I've shown it to my patients. The minute they start checking their sugars and bringing their uh, uh, their you know uh, their glucose monitor, the books, I always provide them with the colorful books. So I always tell them to check pre meals and two hours after their meals. And what I've noticed is most of them actually somehow adhere to it after me telling them how it helps them and how it helps them actually it allows them to make uh, make uh, self-awareness or better choice of uh, uh, you know choosing the right food for them so they probably will start off by eating what they usually eat and then they realize that after two hours when they check their sugars it should up their sugars very high and so what they do is some of them actually kind of portion control it and then they realize okay my sugar is not going up so high or they tend to, you know, go and choose like what I always tell them: try to choose uh, food that are low glycemic and index, comparatively to high glycemic index, so that it doesn't shoot your uh, sugar high. And so when they adhere to it, they tend to see the the trend of sugars that is coming down. And most of my patient, majority of them, actually now love either putting in putting on the CGM or doing their glucometer. I don't ask them to prick all the time. I mean, I think it's very painful. So I tell them to probably do it maybe uh, like in a staggered uh, way. So that means if today morning you're doing for breakfast, so you do pre and two hours post breakfast. Tomorrow you can do post uh, your lunch. But some of them, once they do that, then they become very curious. They're like, okay, I'm going to try it a bit more often. So you kind of indirectly uh, advocating to them and they themselves taking the initiative to do it. And then you actually see improvement in their glycemic control. And majority of my patients actually do see the effectiveness of doing this continuous checking of their sugars. Yes, and monitoring is important for every individual, like to stay on track and make necessary adjustment. So uh, lastly, Dr. Maldi, as we consider a diverse patient population, how do you approach diabetes management in older adults, considering their unique healthcare needs and potential comorbidities? Yeah, so I always again do profiling on them. Uh, I look at number one when, when they come to me in, in the older age group, I want to know what are the complications they have and what are the target organ damage they have. Uh, especially if they have uh, uh, the tendency of having multiple hypoglycemia. So I tend to see these things and then only tailor my medication choices for them. I do not advocate being very strict in regards to their H1C uh, target. 
younger age group newly diagnosed, I tend to aim for 6.5, less than 6.5. Uh, patients who have got advanced cardiovascular disease, uh, patients who's got uh, advanced stroke, or patients who's got advanced CKD, I tend to only aim for less than 7.5, even 7%. Because you don't want to be very stringent on the diabetic control in this age group because already there are evidence, there was a large landmark trial called the ACCORD trial where it has said that the more strict you are with your sugar control, especially in patients with all this advanced complication, you are leading to causing more morbidity than you know uh, anything good for them. So in this age group, I tend not to be very strict with the di- uh, with the sugar control, and I let it run at least seven percent to seven point five maximum. Uh, but of course, keeping an eye whether they have recurrent hypoglycemia, and then looking at the chart that the medication they are on, and then tweaking it again uh, to reduce all this. Because as much as hypoglycemia is a problem in the older age group, hypoglycemia tend to be also a problem for them. Yes, your approach to older adults is holistic and taking their overall health into account. So thank you, Dr. Malathi, uh, for joining us today and sharing your extensive knowledge and expertise in diabetes management. We hope our listeners found this discussion as enlightening as I did. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And to our audience, a huge thank you for tuning in. And before we conclude, I want to bring your attention to the MedSynapse platform, our vibrant hub that's redefining the healthcare landscape. It serves as an invaluable resource for professional doctors like you, offering opportunities to engage in meaningful discussions, connect with expert doctors and be part of advancements in healthcare. So why wait? Explore the MedSynapse platform right now to make the most of these remarkable opportunities. Stay tuned for more engaging conversations on essential health topics. Until next time, stay healthy and informed. Goodbye.